All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Heather Dominic, who is over in New York City. How are you doing, Heather? I'm great. Thank you. So happy to be connecting today. Yeah, and Heather is the founder of A Course in Business Miracles. And since 2010, you've been training highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders to do things differently by working less, making more of a social impact and a higher income. And today is a fascinating subject. Uh, can highly successful and high, can you be highly successful and highly sensitive at the same time? Which I think is a great subject because let's face it, we often think that uh, the most successful people are somehow, you know, less sensitive, hard nosed, able to, you know, roll with the punches and 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 keep going. And that probably puts a lot of other people off trying to go down, you know, leadership paths, etc. Absolutely, yes, that's that says it very well. Yeah. So tell me then. Um, so when you work with with people who are are highly sensitive, first of all, well, let's let's baseline it. D define what highly sensitive means. A great place to start. So first of all, the phrase is not created or coined by me. It comes out of research primarily from the mid 1990s. Uh, there's many psychologists and other areas of research that focus on what it means to be highly sensitive. There's one woman in particular, Dr. Elaine Aaron who's most known for her work because she wrote the book, The Highly Sensitive Person. So in short, what it means to be highly sensitive is that your nervous system is wired to take in stimulation at a much higher degree than someone who's not highly sensitive. And there are only 20% of us in the world who are born highly sensitive. And when you don't really understand how to work with your nervous system, that's wired differently than the majority of the other 80% in the world, it can really create a lot of havoc. But when you do really learn how to work with it, it can absolutely serve and support you. And that includes leadership. Great. So how can you tell, how can one tell if one is highly sensitive? So first and foremost, officially, there's an assessment that was created by Dr. Aaron. I have built off of Dr. Aaron's assessment for those highly sensitives who also feel called to lead, especially in the world of entrepreneurialism. But that assessment or a variation of really is the best way. If you don't have access to the assessment, then you can kind of just do an internal check-in going through the five to six senses, sight, sound, smell, touch, um, energy, et cetera, and just do a check of like, oh, do kind of like higher levels of those areas of stimulation tend to impact me in ways that they don't seem to impact other people. And that's a really good place to start. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's fascinating. Uh, and so, uh, and then just to be just to be clear, I mean, highly sensitive, it doesn't equate to being anxious, being like, you know, because sometimes I think people think highly sensitive people are very anxious and, and sort of like that, you know, kind of a little bit all over the place. I think it actually does. And here's oh. really the key is, as I mentioned earlier, whether you are trained with how to work with your nervous system or not. If you're not, which many highly sensitives are not because most education, for example, is designed for those who are not highly sensitive. So mm -hmm. a highly sensitive will grow up feeling some type of internal sense of being different or equating that with being less than, or even that there's something wrong with them. And without help or support to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together, it can create a lot of anxiety. So if you take just the example of increased stimulation when it comes to say noise, 
you can feel like, gosh, like, why do I have such a hard time being in a loud restaurant when other people don't seem to have that difficulty? And again, if you're untrained, then that could absolutely create a sense of anxiety. However, the key really does go back to the training, which is so much of the work that I do um, in the mm -hmm. highly sensitive leadership training programs. When you learn how to manage your nervous system, then those experiences or situations that perhaps caused anxiety in the past don't need to cause anxiety. So it's not an automatic equation, but it is absolutely right. something to take into consideration. Excellent. And then how does, um, so if one is highly sensitive, how do you start to tap into that? And, and how does that help you? I mean, as an asset in actually being successful, as opposed to what most people would probably think is, is a detriment. Exactly, exactly. When you really start to learn how to hone and intentionally use your highly sensitive nature, then that really gives you access to what I refer to as our top 12 highly sensitive strengths. And some of those strengths are, for example, those who are highly sensitive have a high level of intuitive ability. Those mm -hmm. who are highly sensitive have a high level of empathic ability. Um, strengths such as deep thinking, deep listening, deep feeling. When you learn how to have those strengths really, again, working for you, they can be amazing assets when it comes to leadership in any regard, um, but also definitely in regards to leading within the, the world of self-employment, for sure. So let's talk about in, in the intuitive part for a moment, because I think this is something that is also heavily misunderstood. I mean, people think if you're a highly intuitive, you're sort of thinking that maybe you think that you're a medium or something when it's not. I mean, but, but talk to me a little bit about the intuitive part, because I think that's one of the most important ones. Yes, absolutely. And we can have a whole discussion on <laughs> intuition, right? And, and what that really means. But for simplicity's sake for today, I'll just reference intuition as an ability to really be able to access um, an internal knowing that goes beyond intellectual nature. So when you, again, really learn how to use that ability in, in a strength oriented way. It's very, very supportive when it comes to making decisions, uh, especially within a leadership position. And um, again, in short, when you learn how to use that as a strength, then part of that is also learning to no longer question the intuition, especially if it can't necessarily immediately be backed up by the intellect. But when you really develop that skill, again, it really becomes extremely supportive when you are leading in, you know, any type of, of regard or nature. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, when you're in, well, in any position, but leadership positions particularly, you are never going to have all of the data necessary to make a 100 you know decision data driven decision if you like so there's always going to be a part down to you where you're going to have to use your intuition or your gut or whatever to say okay this is the best way forward yeah absolutely for sure um and again in in, in your, especially your area of expertise in sales when you are a highly sensitive person and you learn how to really use your intuition, you learn how to really trust your intuition, that partnered with other highly sensitive strengths really provides incredible success when it comes to uh, relating with others. And that includes in any type of selling conversation um, or any other situation where you are looking to be able to support someone else also in decision making. The issue is, again, back to the lack of training, because if a mm -hmm. highly sensitive is untrained, then they go to the shadow side of intuition and get caught in the high, what I refer to as a highly sensitive shadow of like analysis paralysis and perfectionism. So you kind of put them side by side. It's like, hmm, would I like to really develop my strength of intuition or do I want to kind of stay stuck in the experience mm -hmm. of analysis paralysis? And you know, for myself and those I mentor, it's like, oh, yes, the way of intuition, that feels much better. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And the the other thing that you mentioned here was empathy, and and it's kind of funny because over the last couple of years, people have been talking about authenticity and empathy a lot, and it's and they talk about empathy in such a way as if it's again, it's just like, oh, it's a skill I can just switch on and off like that, or you can, you know, quickly learn to be empathetic. But I think, again, here's where the sensitive, like, have a have an advantage because with natural empathy, because I don't know how you develop empathy, to be perfectly honest. I would say with a lot of practice, <laughs> <laughs> right? A lot of practice mm -hmm. and intentional training. And I would say also for highly sensitives, again, we go back to the strengths and the shadows, right? So if a highly sensitive is untrained, then their empathy, their ability to be um, empathetic and empathic can really work against them. And that can really flip them into a shadow of over responsibility because they can really say sense and experience what someone else is experiencing or feeling when they're in the shadow side, they feel as if they are responsible for that other person's feelings. When you learn how to really utilize it as a strength, then it allows you to be able to access that ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes, for example. Again, very supportive as a leader, very supportive when it comes to sales. And it's a fine line, not getting caught in the again, feeling responsible, but really being able to utilize that to have a better understanding of someone who's different than you are. Yeah, because let's face it, it, it there's a danger that um, empathy turns to sympathy, right? And exactly. then you start to be, you, right. you start, in, in, instead of delivering, you know, you still, because here's the thing I think people misunderstand about empathy is yeah, you put yourself in the other person's shoes and understand, etc. It doesn't mean you can't, you don't have to deliver tough messages at times. A hundred percent. Very well said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. Um, what what is another what is another area um, of sensitive people that you would like to highlight? Uh, do you mean in terms of their strengths or yeah. something? Mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. strengths, um, yeah. yeah. So definitely, also highly sensitives have a strength of creativity. Mm -hmm. And where sometimes that gets misunderstood is putting creativity in a box as in like only with the arts, right? Like music or dance or um, the visual arts, which absolutely is, is often true as well. Yet creativity is a supportive strength in all regards. Um, if you think about partnering a strength of creativity yep. with intuition, that can be extremely supportive when it comes to creating marketing um, that one feels very genuine and natural to you as well as exciting. So therefore, it's easy to execute. Um, also utilized in leadership, it gives you access to creative solutions to you know problems or situations that when you are looking at it only through a pigeon hole can seem unsolvable. Mm -hmm. And um, it just opens up an entire way of doing things differently and being in the world differently, uh, which really is truly such freedom for those of us who are highly sensitive, because when we try to fit ourselves into the mold of what I like to refer to as the other 80%, it can feel very stifling. It can feel very, um, going back to the word that you used, inauthentic. It can uh, feel, again, um, as if there's a trigger into that sense of less than. So creativity is, my gosh, just such an amazing, highly sensitive strength when you really uh, learn how to access and use it in all regards to support yourself. Yeah, and and I think uh, I think you're completely right. Is where sometimes people think the word creative. Yeah, it's over there in the in the foo foo stuff where they're playing with colors and all of that. And often people think that if you're highly creative, then that means you're not very practical. But that's not the truth either. I mean, because no. uh, in fact, to be really creative means you have to figure out how to actualize what you're creating. Absolutely. I mean, it is absolutely one of my highly sensitive strengths that I use all the time all the time because you know in in 
in my work and um, you know, serving and supporting the members of the Business Miracles community, it's really always about like, well, how can we improve? What what is it that you know maybe worked well but didn't work so well, and what do we want to do better next time? And that's really where that strength of creativity is is constantly at use. Yeah, and and just going back to authenticity for a while because I'm I'm sure there's a lot of highly sensitive people who feel the need to portray themselves as something different Absolutely. because you know being highly sensitive is obviously you know some people have maybe a negative may have a negative connotation for some people or maybe for yourself maybe you're highly sensitive and you think it's a negative trait so how do you how do you help people again like unlock their authenticity if you like or or be true to their authentic self yes i would really say it's it's really at the heart of the work that i do and so it's it's really you know an in-depth process first you have to learn um to know yourself in a different way, to know yourself as a person who's highly sensitive, but to know yourself as a person who's highly sensitive as an asset. And that's mm. really a process, right? Because that's it goes way beyond just intellectual understanding. It's about learning how to work with your nervous system differently, how to be able to look back at previous experiences and see maybe where you weren't able to honor yourself or embrace yourself and then to make decisions about how to do things differently. And then there's absolutely an element of um, building that muscle and a sense of courage of conviction for going forward and what that really means to be one of the 20% in the rest of the world and how to do that in a way that doesn't feel alienating to the people that you care about, um, mm -hmm. but also is not a betrayal of self. Right. Um, so again, it's a thread throughout so much of the highly sensitive leadership training programs and really looking at the socialized self that's been developed versus the highly sensitive essential self um, and who you want to be as as you go forward into your work, your business, your life. Yeah, so uh, so I guess uh, a lot of uh, highly sensitive people who haven't like access training like yours or, or research or, uh, probably have an ongoing kind of inner conflict, uh, their sensitive side, and then them trying to fit in with yes. the way they th perceive the world wants them to be. So I guess that's one inner conflict is probably quite prevalent. Yes, yes. I mean, so much so that I've developed a teaching and a training that I refer to as our coping mechanisms. <clears throat> and that as highly sensitives, we tend to fall into one of three areas of coping and coping is how we've learned to literally cope right to try to be able to fit in to a world that doesn't feel as if it's been designed for us and part of the work that we do in the leadership training programs is to not only identify those coping mechanisms but then to begin to take the steps to shift from coping only into that space of creativity. So shifting from coping to creating. And not that there's anything wrong with the coping mechanisms that have been mm -hmm. developed. And I always say like they've gotten you this far, right? But then there becomes a moment where there is a choice. Um, I literally refer to it as a choice point. It's like, well, do I want to keep defaulting? to that coping mechanism or do i want to start to make decisions differently do i want to start to make choices differently so i can have more of an experience of creating my life versus just coping through it yeah i, I think that's fantastic I have to underline that because yeah coping is as we know i mean you you cope with bad situations you cope with things that come on top of you so again you know coping has a, has a little bit of a negative connotation as well um but i love that idea of moving from coping to creating right. um i mean that's fantastic and and again i think those you know the people who who are highly sensitive who are coping with this i mean it's got to be in some ways sometimes it's got to be a very tough world unless you figure out how to embrace it in like the way you do through your programs oh my gosh absolutely i mean 
everything that I teach and train on comes from my own experience. So I didn't even understand that I was highly sensitive. I had never even heard that phrase, um, you know, until I was already about like six, seven years into my career as a self-employed mm-hmm. person. Um, and it, it, I was miserable. <laughs> it was really hard um and it's not hard anymore and i'm just grateful every single day so yes it is it's very challenging and it can feel as if there is no solution that there's no way out Um, it's a terrible terrible feeling Uh, but there is a solution and there is a way out yeah listen a a fantastic uh, great way to to round this up Um, All of Heather's information is going to be below this video here. Um, But before we go, please do tell us a little bit more about you and Business Miracles. Uh, Well, um, so Business Miracles is uh, is the umbrella of the work that we do in the highly sensitive leadership training program. It comes from my personal experience of being a student of uh, the psychological and spiritual curriculum of A Course in Miracles since I was a teenager. And according to that work, the definition of a miracle is a shift in perception. So when I learned for myself that I was highly sensitive, I really put the two together and thought, oh my gosh, that's absolutely what's needed. I need a shift in perception about myself, about what it means to be in business, about what it means to operate day to day in business. And that was the the birth of Business Miracles. Yeah, fantastic. Listen, I would really highly encourage any of you out there who this resonates with or people that maybe you know who you think this would resonate with. I would really encourage you to, as I said, check out the links below and go and find out more about uh, about Heather and the programs offered. Um, as you would say yourself, you know, don't suffer in silence any longer. Go turn those things that you think are weaknesses or curses, turn them into the strengths that they really are. Yes, for sure. Thank you so much, John. Yeah, thank you, Heather, and thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.